Hey, Caleb, how are you? Hey, Michelle. Um, I am a little tired. I'm doing all right. Uh, how are you? Um, I think I think I'm tired too, and I think I'm tired because I've been having really a lot of really, 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 really big feelings. I don't know. Have you been having really, 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 really big feelings too? I've been having a lot of big feelings. It's been a very big week. Uh, a lot of people in our country helped make some really big decisions. Mm -hmm. Some folks are really happy about that. Some folks are really not happy about that. A lot of people are worried about what happens next. Um, mm -hmm. There are a whole lot of things that people are, are feeling right now and thinking right now. So when you're anxious like that, what do you do to take care of yourself and maybe start to feel a little less anxious? There are a few things that I do. Um, I try to acknowledge that I'm feeling like that. That's um, idea. I try to pray. Yeah. And then I try to do something active. And it's usually in that order. Um, so I might go for a walk or um, there are some trees outside uh, my house. So I might go be with a tree for a little bit, take some deep breaths. Um, how about you? What do you do? Well, that's funny because I have, I have three things too. One, I acknowledge that I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. Two, I pray about it. And my, my, my favorite prayer, and I'll just tell you the opening line is, God, I'm agitated and doubtful right now. So I like to tell God. So maybe I'm announcing I'm anxious and praying at the same time. Yeah. I'm so much more advanced, but I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but then the other thing that I do is, I like to do something active too. And I know you like to run. Mm -hmm. um, I like to get on my bicycle. And if it's raining like today, um, this morning at 7.30, I got on, the, on, I have a stationary bike in the basement. Mm -hmm. and I rode that for um, half an hour. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's, I, think, I think knowing it and saying it out loud, and that's kind of the scary part, right? Because if you mm -hmm. say I'm always afraid somebody, everybody else will go, well, we're not anxious. Why are you anxious? And I'm like, I'm the only one. Um, but say it out loud, turn it over to God and then go do something active. And that's one of the great things about having a dog who likes to go on walks. Although right now, she doesn't <laughs> so, because we're doing all those three things, maybe it's time we should do some growing with God too. I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea too. So we have a gospel today. Mm -hmm. And would you mind reading it? I would love to. Hang on. Let me get it up somewhere where you can see it. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, oh scary. Can you see it? Yes. Excellent. All right. Um, today's gospel, we have Jesus speaking, um, and Jesus is doing that thing he does all the time where he's telling a story. Excellent. Um, so Jesus said, it's also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together and delegated responsibilities. To one, he gave $5,000. To another, 2000 to a third, 1,000, depending on their abilities. Mm. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled the homeowner's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried the wealthy man's money. Mm. After a long absence, the wealthy man of those three servants came back and settled up with them. The one given $5,000 showed him how he had doubled his investment. The wealthy man commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. Hmm. The servant with the 2000 showed how he also had doubled the investment. The wealthy man commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. Hmm. 
the servant given 1,000 said, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways, that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. Mm. I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. The wealthy man was furious. That's a terrible way to live. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with bankers, or at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. Throw that useless servant outside into the darkness. There, people will cry and grind their teeth with pain. And that's the end of today's gospel. That was horrible. That's a right? horrible, re that's a horrible story. Yeah. Maybe we should just go to the Let Us Pray and go home. What do you think? <laughs> Tempting, but I think we have some other things we should do first. <laughs> I guess if we just did that, then we wouldn't really have been growing with God, right? We would right. Have okay. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean, Caleb? Yeah. Oh. So Caleb, mm -hmm. one of the things that caught my attention when we read this earlier this week is a phrase that said, the man gave them all tasks, um, depending on their abilities. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That's a great question. Um, that means a couple things. That means that uh, the wealthy man knew the skills and abilities of each of the servants and gave them things that they were able to do. Um, so it's like if um, you and I were working on something mm -hmm. and I gave you a box to put on a shelf and I knew that you could reach that shelf. Um, and if there was someone else who couldn't reach the shelf, I wouldn't give them that box because I knew they wouldn't be able to reach that shelf. Mm. Um, so that means that the wealthy man knew each of them well enough to be able to give them things that they were able to do instead of giving them things that they couldn't do. That makes sense. Thank you. That was a great answer. Thank you. I think that's generally the way, the best way to do things is to give people things that they can do. Or help them. Like maybe if you didn't have someone who could put it up on the shelf, you mm -hmm. could well, here's a box I need it on the shelf and there's a step ladder in the kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And there was something that I was wondering about too, Michelle. Okay. Um, a little bit further down in our gospel, uh, the servant says to the wealthy man, I knew you had high standards. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, well, that, that's a great question. Thank you. Well, high standards is he he knows what he wants and he has it, like in his head i know that i want i i think the other two servants knew that the high standards were not only don't lose my money mm -hmm. but make more money right and this servant was like oh what if I lose some of this money? So instead of trying, he takes it and he hides it in a hole where he knows he can have complete control over it. And then he turns around and says, well, look, you had such high standards that I couldn't even try to meet those standards. Mm -hmm. So I hid the money. And then he kind of sort of tried to play it off on the wealthy man. Instead of saying, well, if you needed something else you should have helped me you know but i think it goes back to what you said about having um depending on their abilities because um maybe that's why you only got the thousand dollars was because the mass the the wealthy man knew he just didn't have any abilities mm. 
I think he, I think he was kind of dodging and weaving. And I wish the wealthy man had said the step ladders in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah I feel kind of bad for the, the guy with the thousand dollars because doesn't it doesn't go well for him, does it? It does not go well for him at all. It does not. Well, that which leads me to questions. I have questions. So many questions. I have so many more questions than we have time for. Right. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> why do you think that the wealthy man told the servant who didn't do very well, who didn't meet the standards, maybe because he didn't have any abilities, why do you think he told him that was a terrible way to live? That's a great question. Um, I think a lot of things in life that are really good require some work. Mm. Um, and we are not promised that just because we work on it means that we're going to see results in the way that we think we should see results. Mm. Um, sometimes we put in a lot of work and things don't go the way that we hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I were planting a plant, I would put in a lot of work to make sure it got good soil and it got watered and it got all of its nutrients and the plant might still be smaller than I wanted it to be. Um, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't have tried. That doesn't mean that I shouldn't put in the work. Um, if we are, um, if I'm talking with a friend and I hurt the friend's feelings, mm -hmm. I should still try to apologize. Yeah. Um, and try to, to listen to them. Um, and they might be angry um, mm -hmm. and it might be difficult. Um, and it might not go the way that I want it to be. It might not be a quick, easy process, but I'm still called to put in that work and to try. Um, and I think what the wealthy man is saying to the servant is that um, we should always try um, to do the best thing. Um, even when it's difficult, even if it doesn't go the way that we hope it will go, um, that it's still important to, to make that effort and it's still important to try. I'm going to sneak in a second question. Yeah. Do you think that the servant who didn't do anything with the money other than hide it in a hole, do you think that um, he could have helped himself if he had said to the, the wealthy man, well, you've given me this thousand dollars. What do you want me to like? What do you, what do you want from it in the end? Mm -hmm. You know, he, cause he never asked the question. And, um, you know, with, with Jesus's story so often, there's like parts of it doesn't, doesn't feel like we know at yet, you know, like, um, why did the, did the one guy with the, the $5,000, did he earn 5,000 more and then say, okay, great. That's good enough. And then stop. You know, yeah, because they say you, you went about doubling it, but then after a long time. So did he make the five thousand dollars and go, OK, that then I'm safe and I'll I'll, I'll go bury ten thousand dollars in a hole. And, right. You know, like, I, I like to think not. I think it took some time and it took some work. Um, doubling your money is usually not an easy thing. Yeah. Doing a plant is usually not an easy thing. Yeah. Um, making amends with someone who's hurt is usually not an easy thing. Um, so I, I think it probably was difficult for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you're 100% right. There was an opportunity for that last servant to say to the wealthy man, um, what would you like to happen? What is something mm -hmm. um, that I, I can do? Um, I think there are so many times where we assume what someone means um, or what someone's expectations are. Um, in some other versions of this gospel, the servant gets upset with the wealthy man and says um, things like, you're really mean. Um, you don't play fair. And so I didn't want to do anything with the money. Um, yeah. I don't know if the wealthy man was a nice person or a mean person, or there's no way for me to know that. But the um, 
the servant makes that assumption and acts like uh, the wealthy man doesn't intend well. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's part of what we can learn from this too, is not to make that assumption. That makes sense. That, that's a great answer. Thank you for letting me sneak in a second question and answering it. It was a great question. <laughs> Do you have a question for me? And I'll go quick because we're running out of time. I do. Um, the first two servants, mm -hmm. uh, the wealthy man says, from now on, you will be my partner. Um, what do you think that looks like? Well, I, I, I think it's really cool because it makes me think of God. And mm -hmm. I don't think the wealthy man's God, but I think the wealthy man's supposed to make me think of God. So I'm thinking of God. And something that I learned from my beloved is that um, that when God created the Garden of Eden, created Adam and Eve and created all the plants and Adam and Eve got to name all the plants and like that was creation, right? Like that was the story that we hear right at the very start of the Bible, like everything gets created. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this really cool story about that happening. And what I learned from my beloved is that that didn't just stop at the end of the Garden of the Eden story. Creation continues. Every time that you and I tell a story, every time you and I do growing with God, every time you and I get to talk to each other, there's creation and we create it together. Mm -hmm. So I think what the wealthy man is doing is inviting to like, let's go do something cool together. Yeah. Because how you did this isn't how I would do it. And maybe the two of us could do it together. So if you think about God creating and us creating with God, it's happening all the time. And the other thing that I learned is that creation is always good. Mm. Destruction is bad, but creation is good. And we're called to create and to do it with good intentions and good energy and good light and good God and good love. And that's what we're called to do. So I love that they're invited to be a partner. And I'm really sad that the last partner um, didn't get to be a partner. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love that idea of creating with God. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And I love creating with you too. So yeah, like we get, and maybe our friends get to create all the time. And um, we always ask this and sometimes people answer and sometimes people don't, but what did they create this week? That's a great question. And we could talk about it. That would be great. I'd love that. So yeah, I got excited about creation. <laughs> yeah, it's an exciting thing. I'm going to create a prayer. Is that okay? That would be awesome. All right. Creator God, help us to remember that we are a part of this place. Everything that happens that is good and of light and love is of yours. And we are invited to always enter in and be creative and be loving and be kind and create less anxiousness in the world and create more kindness. Help us be present to one another, help us show up for one another, help us be prayerful and less anxious and more active and know that you are always with us. I thank you for Caleb. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for our friends who are watching this. And I hope that you continue to give us opportunities to be together. Amen. Amen. Caleb, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Rosie got longer while she was sleeping. So I think she grew with God and I learned stuff. So I know I grew with God. How about you? I think I grew. I did some growing. Excellent. All right. I will see you next week. And uh, it's good to see your face. You take care. Good to see you. All right. Bye now. Bye.